Earlier on the job site, there was a situation when the concrete forming tube was too small, it didn't fit the square deck post. And I said, we'll come back to the classroom and I'll do this calculation. It's going to be a quarter length calculation. But that's not the only place where you need quarter length calculations. When you build circular stairs to lay out the threads on the stair, you also need a circular, uh, sorry, cord calculation because to ensure that the threads taper nicely and evenly, so you have all the steps nicely advancing. Uh, this stuff doesn't just happen by good luck, you know, to lay it out perfectly and accurately, you need to do quarter calculation because there's no way you can lay out 18 degrees, 8 minutes and 4 seconds. Have you seen anybody on the job site with a protractor walking around? It's not happening because you can't lay out the angles precisely enough. What you can lay out are the cords and the cords are here and here. Oh, that's a little ugly but you get it. It's a straight line and it's not the circumference. You can't reliably hold the tape measure on an arc. You can on a straight line. So that's why you lay out cord, you lay out cord, and you lay out your radius that's given. Another situation for cord calculation or uh, another use for it is when you make cones and this is the mat plan of a cone. Cones are needed for funnels and augers and hoppers and uh, those kind of things. Anything, something to do with sheet metal. Again, you can't lay out that curved line on it. You can lay out the cord on it. There's no way you can measure that angle precisely enough. Not only sheet metal, but also structures, archways and an arch entry or domes over uh, spaces, you know, between walls. You need some uh, roof trusses for uh, arches or domes, and those also involve court calculations. So let's get back to the original problem here with the circle and the inscribed square. On the job, we had the post measured, it was 5 and 3 eighths on all sides. So here's a square, that's 5 and 3 eighths. I converted 3 eighths from fraction to decimal 5.375 inches. And we wanted to know what size of post, sorry, what size of tube do we need to buy for this post? In other words, what should be the diameter of the forming tube? To fit this given post and I said I'm gonna do it the other way around I'm gonna calculate it uh, in reverse order calculating that if we have a given size of forming tube like 6 inch tube or 8 inch tube or 10 inch tube what is the biggest post that can possibly fit in it now you can see that at this fit and at this arrangement the corner of the post would be touching the outside of the forming tube so it's impractical as is so we're just calculating what is the bare minimum size of post that goes around the circle and what is the again bare minimum size of post that would encircle a square post you would want to add a little extra around the corners some extra concrete you know but uh, so this is court calculation just the math okay and watch the following shapes because I'm cheating okay this is extremely important here the diameter of the forming tube was six and a half inches that we purchased and didn't fit. We're going to use that number later, but uh, I'm going to rearrange the direction of the diagonal because that's a diagonal that goes through the middle of the circle and connects any two points along the circumference of the circle. But I can draw a diagonal here, here, here and the number of the million or uh, infinite amount of possible spots I can draw in the diagonal but there is one spot where it's especially useful there. So all I did was rotate the diagonal so now it's vertical. 
is the same square inside 5.375 inches is the side length on that square now the next one is I'm gonna change the diag uh, not diagonal uh, diameter to radius the radius is half the diameter I'm gonna need the radius I'm gonna work with the radius okay you will see why I drew some more radii the plural of radius is not radius this is radii I drew some more they all start at the center of the circle going out to the edge and here you can see that the radius is that long and is passing the uh, edge or the side of the square by about that much but here the radius is going exactly to the corner so that's that's what I drew on this next one side length stays there and I drew two more radii in the picture that's all the changes in this one there's a triangle you know, in fact there are two triangles in it two right angle triangles and you know we can calculate right angle triangles we can do it with uh, the Pythagorean theorem you can do an a square b square stair, that one on it or uh, we can calculate with trigonometric functions sine cosine business we're gonna do both because you're gonna need both what we've got here is I raised one of the radii so I have only two radii left in this picture and uh, again we want to calculate the radius and then we just double it to get diameter because we're calculating if we have uh, 5 and 3 eighths wide deck post what's the minimum size of circle that forming tube that it fits into at 5.375 uh, what I did is you can see that this radius there is one of the radii but there's one radius that cuts that 5.375 exactly in half okay and if it does so this purple triangle here has uh, a base of 2.675 because that's half of that 5.375 and the other half of it is there on the side we don't need it so you know what I'm just gonna erase it from there because it's not really needed there and uh, what we've got here is this right angle triangle that I just put in of itself it's a 45 45 90 degree cute little right angle triangle that we can do a square b square c square business on it now because it's a 45 45 triangle also known as an isosceles triangle with equal length of legs and then one piece of hypotenuse we know that this 2.68 going up 2.6875 on that side is the same as on that side because these are 45 degree corners here okay and uh, isosceles triangles means that both of these sides are 2.6875 long and we're looking for the hypotenuse on this triangle now please recall that uh, the formula that was used was a square plus b square equals c square now here a and b are the same length a could be the altitude and b could be the base but because it's an isosceles triangle they are the same and instead of c square I have r square why are we squaring the radius? Yeah, we're not just squaring the radius for uh, fun and cheers. The C side of the triangle in the formula, that C is not the radius of the circle. It doesn't become radius on its own, but in this particular situation where the triangle is fitted inside the circle, yeah, so the side that's referred to with a letter C uh, or sometimes with the letter H uh, is going to be referred to with the letter R because that's the, the radius of the circle it's important that you get that part from then on the numbers are pretty straightforward 
you square that one, you square that one, add it and square root it. And instead of adding, I just wrote times two because it's two of the same. But that's important that the times two happens before square rooting, okay? So square it and double it and then square root it. And then you're going to get the radius. If you have the radius, you get the number 3.8 inches. Double it to get diameter from the radius. And that number, that 7.6 inches, is the answer to the question, what tube fits this uh, post that's given? And just to recap, here are the steps that we did. We measured the widest side on the post and it was 5 and 3 eighths. You chop that number in half because we can only calculate half the chord. Okay, so 5.375 was chopped in half. So we have half the chord. We had to square it. We had to double it because it's a 45-45 triangle. Once we doubled it, we square rooted it and we had radius at that step. And then doubled it again and we got diameter. There are doublings and dividings by half. Don't be creative on this one, okay? These are the steps in this procedure that you need to follow to the letter. Okay, one after another. Don't try to do algebra on it, okay? So, stick with the Pythagor Pythagorean theorem. So that answers the question, what tube fits? are given that post. Now, in the store, there are no 7.6 inch concrete forming tube, okay? That's obvious. Minute one, second one. What you do look at in the store, if the 8 inch diameter concrete forming tube is big enough for your deck post, at the corners, is it gonna give you enough concrete that doesn't crack and doesn't give you grief? Or you maybe you wanna go with the 10 inch concrete forming tube, which we actually did, and you can uh, see the pictures on it, how it's uh, formed up and everything. The other calculation is, what is the biggest post that we can buy, that, that, that we can place inside a given concrete forming tube, and if the diameter of the 6 inch forming tube is 6.5, because I measured it on the on side, then the calculation goes as follows. If the diameter is six and a half, that means that the radius of that forming tube was 3.25 because radius is half the diameter, okay? And again, we apply the same a square plus b square equals c square. The reason why I wrote it with different letters because that's how, again, it relates to this 45, 45, 90 triangle that we have, that we have inside, that's how a circle and an inscribed square uh, work together. And so again, R square, that's the C, that's the, that's the hypotenuse, and that's given, that's 3.25. We already purchased that tube, and the biggest post we can fit into it is coming out here. You square that number first, and A square plus A square, I just rewrote it as 2A square because you have two sides on the triangle that are the same length. So I squared the 3.25 and that's 10 and a little. 3 by 3 is 9 plus a little there, that number, 10 and a half plus change. After that you need to square root it. So square it, square root it, and, uh, and then you get 2.29 for half the chord. Double it to get the side length to arrive to 4.59 inches, which I converted it to uh, something that's more recognizable. It's kind of close to four and nine sixteenths of an inch, but it's so it's a little more than four and a half inches, but not as long as four and five eighths. Okay, so that's the size of the biggest side length of the biggest post we can fit into a six inch six inch nominal forming tube. And uh, the steps on this one, on this calculation, are fairly straightforward. Measure the tube that you have, measure the diagonal of it, okay? Make sure you go through the imaginary middle, just do your best eyeballing. Chop that in half to get radius. Square that number that you, that you got, 
divide that number by 2, that's what we did there, and square root that number. And when after square rooting you double it, and that's when you get the side length out of it. Okay, so that number there answers the question, what's the biggest post that fits inside a given circle or forming tube? And if you, let's see, and if you take a look at the papers here that I, I drew it at, you know, that's also an option. I drew it at full scale. I'll get you off this tripod so you can get a little closer. There we go. Here is my six and a half inch forming tube. You can see the outline of the circle, kind of faint, but it's all there. There, this is my six and a half inch forming tube. And on it, you can see that the biggest inscribed circle is 4.59 inches or four and a little more than nine sixteenths of an inch. So there, four and nine sixteenths. You can see it, it's on the zero. And the other one works just as fine. Uh, here is the five and three eighths post that I drew and the least amount of uh, forming tube or the circle that it fits into has a diameter of 7.6 inches and that's how this one is done and verified you can see them there side by side okay I uh, get back on the tripod here and let's take a look at the rest of the court calculation because the squares inscribed a circle work fine if you're doing this uh, this kind of problem in and of itself but for court calculation we are gonna need to do trigonometry with sine cosine okay it's not gonna hurt it's gonna be fast and straightforward from here on there we go okay i just tighten the screws here okay so please remember that we had this purple triangle that was fitted inside the circle and the square and what happened is I replaced my previous letters with completely new letters okay there are no A's there are no B's and there are no R's because your trigonometric equations relate to opposite adjacent and hypotenuse so here the radius which was here and there and it was green in the previous one that's still the hypotenuse of the triangle and opposite is still as long as adjacent but if you have a stair calculation to do to lay out your treads this angle is not going to be 45 and your opposite and is not going to be as long as your adjacent okay so that's why we're doing it this way so what we've got here is that it's very important that the angle that I marked or made it very black and very prominent that's the central angle or included angle or central angle in the circle because that's the angle that you are going to need to use for your cone layout, your thread layout for circular stairs, arches, uh, domes, everything you calculate for calculating the chord. You need the central angle. Okay, don't go with this one. That's a 90 degree angle. There's nothing to do there. Go with that one, the central angle. Okay, very important. Let's do some numbers. Do recall your Soka Toa. Soka Toa, memory jogger for the trigonometric uh, equations. So means sine of an angle equals opposite divided by hypotenuse. Okay, that's what Soch means and in this case that's a 45 degree angle so therefore sine of any angle in this case 45 but again your threads will be different angles it's gonna have degrees minutes and seconds to it okay that's why this one is very important sine of an angle is the opposite side divided by the hypot sorry the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse and uh, if the opposite is uh, 2.6875 which is half the side length of a 5 and 3 8 deck post because the 5 and 3 8 deck post was 
uh, 5.375, so half of that is uh, that number. That's, that's the opposite. And if you want to calculate the radius and then the diameter, this is what you do. That formula, that SOCH, is the same as the, the hypotenuse and the sine of any angle, not just the 45. They, they, they can trade places, okay? Because that's just how divisions work. So what I wrote here is the same formula, just rewritten to calculate the hypotenuse from this one. Again, your hypotenuse will be the radius, and then we'll just double it to get the diameter. So the opposite side was 2.6875, divided by sine 45. You can just go in your calculator and and I wrote the numbers down there quickly but here is uh, the calculator's version 2.6875 divided by sine button and 45. On this one the circuitry works this way and sine 45 not just the first four digits those are nice but here is all of the digits 3.3 .3 Oh, I guess I made a mistake there. Just a sec. Just give me a sec. 3.3. No, actually. Sorry. Wrong entry in the calculator. My bad. It's 2.6875. My bad. Divided by sine 45 equals 3.8 it is. So I just put back 3.8. And then we'll double it to get the to get the diameter. 7.6 is the diameter of the circle in which this post with a side length of five and three eighths of an inch fits. So then 7.6 is the size of the forming tube. And again, you can't buy that size, but so you go to eight inch or ten inch tube. What's important here is uh, that's how you use the trigonometric formula to calculate the from uh, to calculate the radius or the diameter when half of the chord is given that opposite side is half of your chord and the other way around if we have the diameter given or the radius if we have a fixed circle and we want to calculate the opposite side that is half the chord length or we can double it later and get the full chord length or the full side of the square post then again we have sine of an angle equals opposite over hypotenuse therefore what we can do is multiply those, thing, those two things together to get the third one and I wrote that one there Sine 45 again is that number, but you can just go on the calculator. Sine 45 times 3.25 equals 2.29 plus change. I double that number again to get the side length, and there we have it the biggest side length of, the, of, of a square or the chord length. Or side, the biggest side length of a square that fits into a square with a radius of 3.25 or a diameter of 6.5 is that number, 4.59. That's about mm, uh, a little more than 4.5 inches, about 4 and 9 sixteenths is close enough. So that's how the quart calculations go. You are going to be using more, for most of your life the ones with the trigonometric formulas in it so you are gonna be needing a scientific calculator with the trig functions and the buttons in it and on it okay